This honestly looks kind of weird. Don't listen to them. They are all liars. It just looks cheap and bad. And Disney, come on, do better. Like, just look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so bad. It's been a very interesting time. Uh, we're gonna go and show you some new Festival of the Arts offerings and foods and everything. Uh, but first, we gotta talk about what <laughs> what happened this week. They redid the front entrance to Epcot, where you go through the little ticketing booth. It feels soulless and lifeless. Someone on Twitter made an incredible version of what it could have been. Disney fans are, I feel like, creating better things than the Imagineers. That fits in with kind of like the new modern aesthetic that happened to the front entrance of Epcot. Think about the entrances to all the Disney parks. Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, the Magic Kingdom. The first introduction into kind of what type of theme park you're going in into. So there's that, the front entrance. And then the big topic of the week is these new parking signs. As you know, why Disney is so successful is because they created something so unique. Every single square inch is meticulously thought of from the time you get on Disney property to the time you leave. To have this overarching story of everything and to be immersive. We now come to these Epcot parking signs. So they try to do like half space, half earth, which I can kind of appreciate. So they have Crush and Dory, and then they have Moana and Hey Hey the Chicken. So that's like the water earth side. Uh, and then for the space side, we have Gamora, Rocket, Eve, and Wally. Now Eve and Wally have no presence in the park except for a little playground. Uh, Rocket, I think is fine, kind of shoving in these IPs anywhere they can go. It's almost kind of a slap in the face for all like Epcot and kind of Disney fans. I do agree there needed to be new signage and there needed to be a better way of parking here at Epcot, because it's kind of a mess. The signs, I don't agree with the characters that they put. It just doesn't fit with the vibe of Epcot. Again, the internet made something amazing. Abby draws things. Did new parking signs in the same art design, right? With classic Epcot characters. That's a great way to kind of make something new, but also kind of give the passionate Epcot fans something to remember, give you that nostalgia factor. Because Disney loves to coast on their nostalgia. But yes, they gave us hey, hey. Also, the Epcot parking lot, right? The trans are still not bad. I counted how many days it's been. It has been over a thousand days since Epcot and Hollywood Studios have had trams. I am not asking for much. Disney. It helps out a lot of people with mobility issues and after a long park day it helps them get to their car. Last time I was here I had to park in like the booty crack of the Epcot parking lot where like the marathoners start and there's no train. You had to walk all the way. So I always think about like my grandmother right coming to Disney. People come in all different shapes and sizes and different ages and walking can be a lot for them. You're looking at August time. 110 degrees. There's no shade in this parking lot. You're gonna make my grandmother park all the way in the back walk a half mile to then get into the park. Some people need wheelchairs right so they're gonna have to walk and then come in and then they can finally get to their wheelchair inside the park. Josh is saying that like, oh, we have no budget problems. Well then bring back the tram. I don't get it. Why has it been over a thousand days? It's pitiful. We also got to stop by the boardwalk because apparently they added more to the Carousel Coffee Cafe. Okay, this is where we are. Hey, hey, um, 110. They didn't even try to remove the old lettering. So you can clearly see it says journey underneath hey hey they couldn't have gotten a power washer or something just to take off the journey you see it right there's the j <laughs> there's the o oh you gotta be kidding me they didn't even try to make a new sign they just put the sticker over it you still see journey underneath the hey hey sign like just look at that <laughs> <laughs> that looks so bad. Now, when I was looking at this parking sign, I was only there for about 30 seconds, and about six different random guests were commenting about that they could see the journey underneath. It's just not a good look. <laughs> it just, it looks cheap. Like, imagine you go to Universal, right, and you look at their parking sign, and they have to update one, they put like a Harry Potter image over the new parking sign, and then you can see King Kong peeking out from underneath. It just looks cheap and bad, and Disney, come on, do better. Now, it's now officially the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company. Disneyland is doing a bunch of amazing things. I don't think we're doing really anything here except some new uh, merchandise. I do love this entrance with the lights that go around, they have the flags, and they brought back the fountain. They did do an amazing job with this front entrance. Now you gotta stop by the creation shop because this is where I have to pick up my annual pass holder magnet. We got our special annual pass holder magnet. It's got a little Dumbo on it. He's got a cute little like cartoony design to it. Every month they've been having this new collection, right, of the new Mickey. This one is really cool. It's going to be $35 though, but the matching spirit jersey looks straight out of the 90s. This is a great design. You have like the glitter kind of like bubble gel design right there with the castle. Now this is gonna be $90, but look at the gold. And then you have Minnie and Mickey right there in their anniversary outfit. This is such a good spear jersey. Why did they not release this earlier in the run? Now here's the 100th anniversary little cup. These are gonna be $50 each, uh, but I don't see anybody fighting over them. For $25, they have this adorable little Dumbo. 
succulent and this is gonna be fifty dollars you can kind of like put some little snacks on there but you have the mad hatter teacups love that design eighty dollars they have this dope like retro jean jacket now disney kind of has like they go on like a little hot streak with like great merchandise and then it all sells out and then we get left with a bunch of bad stuff but this uh this is a good collection here's a little mug you're looking at 28 dollars 35 dollars they have a new stitch plush uh stitch looks oddly like a sloth or something with these very elongated arms but he's got a little rose right there 30 dollars they have this monorail lunchbox what oh, i'm digging that that is awesome for 40 dollars they also have another plush set for valentine's day it's gonna be carl and ellie this is kind of when they're on their little picnic for a hundred dollars they have a disney cruise line play set for 125 dollars they have this amazing little sculpt right you have spaceship earth with figment right there you gotta paint him like one of your french girls figment does kind of have a little bit of a lazy eye going on but really cool design it's got little lights right there that turn on now, there's not too much festival art stuff left just a lot of these little uh figment munchling uh, these would be 30 dollars though kind of a bedazzled ears so 30 dollars is a little mini plush but she honestly looks kind of just like a robot then they got a new mickey plush for 35 dollars okay this is the merchandise that i'm talking about right the nostalgia for epcot it's 37 dollars i'm gonna get this straight out of the 90s okay very rarely do i buy like disney shirts hey, y'all are not gonna believe this look Look, look, what is this sizing, Disney? I look like a toddler who just threw up on himself in elementary school and they just gave me the only shirt and lost and found. Why does this fit like this? I wear like large and extra large shirts. This is like, this feels like a triple X. Okay, so the whole reason we have Wally and Eve as parking signs is because this is their playground. Yeah, they, they got a sign just because of this little playground. Always love stopping and seeing the new chakra. Let's see what they've created. Kind of hard to see with the shadows happening. I like that one. I like the vibrant colors that are used. They have one of Daisy Duck. And there's one of Donald fishing. Okay, the fact that someone can create that out of chalk blows my mind. Look at the level of detail and realism in that face. I'm digging this one of Mickey right now. Last time I was here was opening day. Let's see if it's still a madhouse in there. Now, my little tip, if they want to switch it up for next year, you can see like the lines on a figment's stomach. Turn that into a rainbow, right? Be a simple switch up you don't have to pay for a whole new design but just switch out the colors on the stomach that'd be really cool all right let's hop into the inspiration station uh, they said there's no line you could go in immediately or you can literally buy it at the register here legit empty line and you just have an army of pigment popcorn buckets there clones can think creatively you will find that they are immensely superior to droids they are totally obedient taking any order without question if they switch up the design, I feel like there'd still be a demand for them. Right, this is gonna be our first little food booth of the day that we're gonna go to. This looks like how you're supposed to cook meat. We got the carne asada, chipotle marinated beef sirloin, sweet potato puree with, with uh, crispy fried onions. Try the meat first. You get a slight little hint of the chipotle, but it, with carne asada, you're supposed to be kind of like hit with some good flavors. So this is lacking it. Let's try it with the puree and everything. Very onion heavy. It's almost like carne asada meets a French onion soup it's not too robust on the flavors but i think i'm gonna do like an eight out of ten it's decent by the way look i kind of wanted something like life-changing okay our next stop is gonna be the uh little french food booth here in france so great that the cultural representatives are back i got the uh purpose of chocolate cake i'm gonna butcher the name i'm sorry um melo nox ah, no, nuestra et pelate verona um so it's gonna be molten chocolate and a hazelnut cake with pure origin Valhorna chocolates, passion fruit, mango sauce. This looks a lot kind of like the chocolate cake uh, from Ireland, for what, for food and wine? So let's try it. A little bit of that fruit sauce right there. It's very identical to the Irish cake, but you get this wonderful like sweetness from the fruit in there, which is good. I don't think it's as good as the Irish cake. I think this is like a nine out of 10. The Irish cake is like a 10 out of 10 for me, but this is very good. Nice and like ooey and gooey. I was walking by this booth and I saw Indiana Jones stuff, so I gotta go see this artwork. Oh, I wish we didn't have the glare, but they have one for Indiana Jones, Raiders, and they have one for The Last Crusade. Look at this one for Temple of Doom. We're taking a break from Epcot. We're going back to Carousel Coffee, the boardwalk. They've added more to the, uh, I've nicknamed it the Carousel of Carnage because it's just a monstrosity. Some Somebody paid like $16,000 to have the little horse and buggy carriage out here. No, don't even trail. Don't even trail. It looks like they just had the little wedding right there. I'm gonna head over here to the little horse and carriage. Uh, we came up here. It's, uh, it's it, The Crohn's is calling. Let's just say that. And uh, they're down for refurbishment. This is my worst nightmare right now. Okay, we have to go down some elevator. We're gonna cover the carousel coffee stuff in a second. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. Properly themed table and chairs. The era. Just remember that. Look, look at that style of chair and a little table. We're back. Now they switched some stuff. Still have the carousel right there. The floors are all dirty. There's trash there. There's all sorts of crumbs over there. They're gonna get critters during the night. This was a photo of Goofy and the teacup rides. Now it's just a black and white photo of the castle. Julia Andrews next to the carousel in Disneyland. I believe this is in like the 60s or 70s when they took this photo. And they have another uh, vintage photo of the teacups. And they added um, 
this random table and chair in here. What's your chair review? <laughs> so hard. You got no cushion. Uh, I was watching the pilot episode, right, of The Last of Us, but this is the table that they're pretty much sitting next to, which takes place in, what, the 60s? The th and uh, we're here in the turn of the century. <laughs> Why is this a uh, vintage like 60s table in here? Oh, it's my first time sitting in these chairs. These chairs suck. You can't fit in them. You just slide out. This, it's not big enough for a standard adult. This is supposed to be turn of the century. I just took random vintage photos from Disneyland and Disney World. Another carousel photo. A photo from the boardwalk lobby of the little roller coaster. Wh what? Uh, the topiaries in Magic Kingdom next to the teacup ride. Another carousel horse. Another picture of the teacups and another modern day Instagram pic of the teacup. These frames don't even match with the rest of the frames. Just put a picture of Kermit sipping uh, iced tea then. If that's what we're doing, just taking random Disney stuff with like beverage containers. I guess it slightly looks better. Uh, the lights are still flickering like Will is trying to talk to us from the upside down. These just look like Instagram photos still. It's like we're in this weird time warp that we entered into. I guess it is kind of like the multiverse of madness, right? Is that these look straight out of Avengers Campus in the little Doctor Strange area. They just put random uh, succulents in here. Some little glass pellets. How is this turn of the century? I can't tell if it's worse or if it's better. I guess there's more stuff to look at. There's more stuff that doesn't even make sense because it doesn't fit in with the timeline or the theming. <sighs> Like, I, again, I'm not trying to be negative about Disney, but like they don't know what they're doing. They've lost heart and soul of what makes Disney Disney, and they're just doing random crap just for no reason without it relating to what it, it's supposed to. This is just bad. Again, there's not a single person sitting in here because it's so unwelcoming. They are redoing the lobby right now, and I'm worried because I feel like it's all gonna become modernized. Working on these, and I'm sure it will blend in with this, and then this will probably be the next stuff to go, all the vintage stuff over here. People come here vacation, after vacation, have their family reunions here, right? And they, they know and love it. They're so passionate about this resort because of how it was built. And for it to be changing for the worse is upsetting a lot of people. I don't know what Disney is doing. I don't know what the Imagineers are doing, but you look at the parking lot, you look at the Epcot front entrance, you look at this, it's just like, I would say one in 10 projects are actually good with what Imagineering is creating, which is sad. The one positive? The, the air conditioning right here. You're what? just like right down on you. Feels great. Okay, so the succulents here, we thought these were fake and plastic, um, but these are real succulents. Aren't they supposed to be in dirt? Not just sitting in some glass pellets? We've sat here for about five minutes. It is very uncomfortable and my back hurts. There's a reason no one is sitting in this area. Well, I keep you updated all things changing here at the Carousel Coffee. I'm so nervous. Now, you know what Disney's gonna do? It's gonna replace all these paintings and there's gonna be giant photos of the castles from the different Disney parks. This is the photo in there that they, they took of this little roller coaster here. Why would you take a photo of something being literally what like 50 feet away i guess that's the only properly themed time period piece in that whole uh photo collection is of this so they're doing construction on this and there's a little area that you can check in over here so, all right we've made it back to epcot uh they have like a little uh bubble machine over here by the bathrooms i think this is oh it's all the bubbles when you pop them they're too high now they turn into smoke Now Matt got some like uh, some green <laughs> beer, some blue beer, and some red beer. Looks like something out of Galaxy's Edge. Blondale, Butterfly Lager, and a fruit tart. That's all that in. tastes like food coloring. <laughs> That's terrible. The Green Envy Blonde tastes like rotten corn flakes with green food dye. That one's all right, but this one, it's so tart. Like, you know how a Snapple apple, when you take a sip of it, it like dries your mouth out because yeah. it's so sweet? That's exactly what that is. All right, what's your uh, figment backwash beer flight uh, review? Uh, zero. Straight garbage. Don't buy it. Don't, don't listen to anybody who tells you that it's good. Don't listen to them. They are all liars. Three Daughters Brewing Black Cherry Hard Cider. Then we have the Blood Orange Hard Cider. Then we have the Passion Fruit Hard Cider. The lighter one I'm guessing is going to be the Passion Fruit. It's supposed to be all different colors. It looks like the different stages of dehydration. That's what's going on right there. Not tasting too much of anything going on in there. I'm getting more apple from that. It's like a plain apple cider. Center one is blood orange. It's good. Nothing amazing though. And this is probably the black cherry. Black cherry kind of tastes like um, 
you know like the cherry flavoring that they put into like cherry gummies? That's what it tastes like. I think the passion fruit one is my favorite. Cider Flight, eh, it's it's fine. I think I'll do a 6.5. Uh, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't anything grand or special that I'd go out of my way to order it again. We'll do 6.5 on it. There's a girlfriend popping a boyfriend's pimple in the middle of Epcot. Please contain yourself, little teenager. Now, this used to be the donut box. Now it's the uh, modern booth. And the whole reason we're here, honestly, is for one thing. They got crab. We got the angry crab, aka the Mr. Crab. It's gonna be a whole crispy soft shell crab with green papaya salad, mango sriracha fluid gel, coconut lime foam with pomegranate and mango crushed pearl. Uh, this is just overly complicated. Why can't it just be like a nice soft shell crab? They're injecting it with gels and everything. Try a crab leg. They're being soft shell crab. Honestly, it looks kind of weird, but, but it, it needs a little more seasoning to the crab. You know what type of seasoning? It needs some Old Bay seasoning. That's what it needs. I'll do a six out of 10. It's not bad. I think the standard person will enjoy it, but it, it's uh, it's missing, honestly, flavor. They were focusing all these other ingredients. You gotta focus on the flavoring of the crab. Kinda disappointed. All right, time to pop in Connections Eatery for the last little snack. All right, now the special little waffle work is actually at the Starbucks. So we got the uh, the Big Mint, like Belgian waffle. This one's really cool. They make it here, but I feel like people who like worship Big Mint, this is like what they put out as their little offering. Orange icing, a white chocolate Fig Mint medallion. We got sprinkles over here. So just a sugar overload. So a lot of like waxy sugar happening. You need a thing of water to get through that waffle. But this one, it was just too much of that waxy kind of sugar frosting. Honestly, a five out of 10, it was kind of tough to get through because of just so much of that sugar wax. So five out of 10, looks amazing. Uh, but taste wise, uh, just go with the standard waffle that they have. A special photo op offering here. Uh, we're gonna do it, it's only for Festival of the Arts. That is a wrap on Epcot and Festival of the Arts. Uh, let's go back to the office and kind of talk about everything that happened today. Okay, so guys, we are back in the office. The wall has been painted blue. It's no longer that like sad and depressing gray. It really helps out all like the props pop from the wall. So let's talk about uh, kind of imaginary, the current state of Epcot. So first off, let's just kind of talk about the state of imaginary. As we all know, 2020 happened. A large majority of Imagineers were laid off. A lot of them went to work for other companies. Had Imagineers retired and then they went on to other companies where they honestly they were just being paid and uh, treated better where they could actually shine with their creativity. Now we're at this like current state of Imagineering. It's kind of like a hodgepodge, right? You have like projects that were halfway finished before 2020. So you have new people coming in working on them. And then you have new people coming in. Then you have the old people who are still there. And it's just kind of like, it's not a very good melting pot. There's no like cohesive vision. So that's why like we get great stuff like the Odyssey Pavilion, right? Where they like did all the figment stuff. But look at the little passport. On the bottom right hand corner, every page, it's like figment moves and then he paints himself. Little details like that. That is that is what I love. And then we come to the parking signs, right? Like, yes, they are parking signs, but it's more of like a bigger picture thing, right? It's um, just Disney kind of losing its vision. I understand why Crush and Dory are there and Rocket and Gamora, right? Have rides there. Wally and Eve had a pl have a playground. <laughs> why are they on parking signs? It was kind of like a slap in the face, right, to all the Figment fans. Disney loves to sell merchandise of Figment, but when it comes to like actually showing him love outside of the festivals, they really don't. Kind of this vision is just kind of lost because there's too many cooks in the kitchen. It's going to take a while for them to kind of like figure things out. I'm gonna say five years for like Disney to kind of like finish the projects that they were working on and uh, come up with a new vision with kind of Iger and Josh in charge because this stuff is still kind of the JPEG era, right? Of pushing the IPs. You know, Iger CEO right now, you look at that metal sign. It is not too cheap to buy a metal sign. Put a new sticker on it so you don't see Journey popping out from underneath it. Seeing stuff like that just makes Disney feel very cheap. Like it wouldn't surprise me if I saw that at like Six Flags or something, but to see it at Disney, it was kind of a big turnoff for me. Every single person walking by was like, ugh. It's more than just, you know, the hardcore fans, the standard guests that are noticing that, right? And when they notice those little details that kind of build up, that makes them not want to come back sometimes. Imagineering's got some vision issues they gotta figure out. Creatively, I don't know what's going on at that boardwalk, y'all. <laughs> I'm just at a loss for words. I love the boardwalk. I love the Coney Island turn of the century design everywhere there. And then you just put that modern crap in there. Like, what are you doing? Now I kind of want to talk about like, why do I take this stuff so like personally, right? When I'm like talking about this stuff about Disney. If you work for the company, you know, you give your blood, sweat and tears literally to like make the company what it is. You want to make a difference in people's vacation. You want to keep this high standard that Walt built. And to kind of see like everything that like me and millions of other cast members help create kind of like turn into this mush. Like we used to have a Gideon's cookie, right? And now we're at this like sawdust chips ahoy flavorless cookie. It's still a cookie, right? But it, it's just not what it used to be. That's why it's like so upsetting 
to kind of like see this happen. And then also for a lot of you guys, y'all spend a lot of money to come to these trips and I want you to know like what's going on. I know there's a lot of other people who just kind of like gloss over like the bad stuff within Disney. I try to like focus on the good and the bad, but right now there's just a lot more bad than good, which is sad. So that's why I still think we're kind of in like the Disney dark ages. Cast members are like protesting in the parking lot at West Clock uh, because Disney is refusing to give them a raise. They're giving them a raise, but it's a, it's a dollar raise. Honestly, that doesn't do much. As you know, the cost of living, you want to live on your own, about $2,000 a month to have your own one bedroom or little apartment. Or if you want to live with multiple people, it's almost like $1,000 sometimes a month just to live with multiple roommates. A dollar raise is not gonna help really anyone. I believe it's like one in 10 cast members are homeless. Cast members, again, give their blood, sweat, and tears for this company. And it would be nice if like, they just got paid a decent living wage for the prices that Disney has charged. Happier cast members is gonna be a better environment for the guests, which will make them wanting to come back and to spend more money. Disney is just thinking very short-sighted with their budget. And it's just sad because to some of you guys, right, the cast members are just a number. But to me, they're my friends, they're my family. So to see them being treated like this, that's why I get like kind of so heated and frustrated about this stuff within the Disney company. That's my little hot take for the day. Let me know down in the comments what are your thoughts about everything that I talked about today. But uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button. Join the family. I love the family. Because I'm gonna keep you up to date on all things Disney and theme park around the country. Guys, I love you all and I'll see y'all very soon. Rotten corn flakes. Hey, no, 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 no. Okay, Photopath is having Matt uh, bow right now.